Hi there. In a previous video, we looked at the concept of the lens curve, which is a visual representation of inequality, either of income or wealth. A related idea, which is a numerical value for inequality, is something called the Gini coefficient. So let's take a few moments to revise this important idea. Let's go back half a stage, think back to the Lorentz curve, which is a cumulative income curve. And it's shown here the Lorentz curve is the path of income as we move from the poorest households to the richest households. In theory, if there was no inequality, the Lorentz curve would be a line of equality from the 45 degree line from the origin. The reality, of course, is that the Lorentz curve is skewed, it's bowed away from the line of equality. And the greater the skew, the greater the, the degree of difference between the curve and the line of equality, then the, the, the bigger is the degree or the scale of income inequality. Now, the Gini coefficient is calculated using Lorentz curve data. And the Gini coefficient is just a number. It is the area A, which is the area between the Lorentz curve and the line of equality. This area A divided by, divided by the area A plus B. A and B added together. So the, the more skewed this curve is, the greater will be area A relative to area A plus B. It gives us a number. It's called the Gini coefficient. Now, before we get to the data from various countries, let's have a look at some data from the UK. Hopefully this will illustrate the, the point at hand. Uh, we divide our population up into quintiles. So the first quintile is the poorest 20% of the population through to the richest 20%, that's the top quintile. I'll also give you some data on the bottom 10%, the poorest 10% and the richest 10%. If we take household disposable income. Well, first of all, let's take original income. Income from wages and salaries, income from um, interest from savings, that kind of stuff. Basically, income before taxes and benefits have their effect. If we take original income, we see that the poorest fifth of the population only earned 4% of all the income. The next quintile only 8% the next quintile 15%. So the poorest 60% of the population only earned 27%, just over a quarter of original income. Indeed, the richest fifth of the population earned 49% of the income in the UK in 2016. And the top 10% earned 31% of the income. So original income is quite highly distributed income inequality is quite highly skewed the Gini coefficient for original income is 49.2 or if you prefer it as a fraction 0.492 which obviously is pretty high if we look at disposable income income after direct taxes have been paid income after welfare benefits have been distributed then we see that income inequality is less skewed, less severe. So the poorest fifth, they take home 8% of disposable income, the next 20%, 13% and so on. So in fact, the bottom 60% now have 38% of the disposable income, still lower than 60%. The top fifth go down from 49% to 40%. And the top 10%, still have one quarter of all the disposable income. Okay, that's the way the tax system works and welfare benefit system works in part to redistribute income. But notice that the Gini coefficient is lower. So progressive taxes and welfare benefit systems help to reduce the Gini coefficient. For the UK in 2016, the Gini coefficient was about 0.32 or 32 if you want to express. As a, as a number. So what the Gini coefficient does for us is it basically condenses the entire income distribution for a nation just into a number between 0 and 1 or between 0 and 100 if you express it slightly differently. The Gini coefficient is undoubtedly the most widely used measure of income inequality. 
Very simple point. The lower the value, the more equally household income is distributed. The higher the number, the greater is the degree of income inequality. So it ranges from zero to one or 100. Uh, a Gini coefficient of zero basically means there's no inequality, perfect inequality, perfect equality. Uh, every member of a population has exactly the same income. A Gini coefficient of the other extreme, either a value of one as a ratio or 100, indicates that just one person has all the income. Nobody else has anything. Now, the rule of thumb is that a Gini coefficient above 0.4, it's not a it's not a perfect measure, but a, a Gini coefficient of above 0.4 or 40, expressed as a number, is seen as quite important, particularly, particularly in countries where inequality is reaching you know, politically and socially difficult levels. These are the countries in the world with the highest Gini coefficient, this time expressed as a number between 0 and 100 in 2012. So the Seychelles has the dubious honour of most, the greatest income inequality. I put in there a country like Zambia, copper-rich Zambia, very high inequality. Brazil scrapes into the countries with high Gini coefficients, all of which, as you can see, are above 0.5 or above 50, expressed in that way. Income inequality in the States has been getting worse in this sense. This is the published Gini coefficient for the United States since 1990. It's gone up from 0.43 or 43 to 0.48. In contrast, income inequality in China, according to the official numbers, if we can believe them, has actually been gently falling in the last 10 years or so, albeit from a high level from 48.5 down to 46.2. So income inequality in China actually, on this measure, is falling. A country where income inequality is both low and relatively stable is South Korea. And you see here that their Gini coefficient over the last 10 years or so has remained extremely stable at about 0 0.3, 0 0.31. So a country like South Korea actually has a Gini coefficient quite similar now to the United Kingdom, but much lower than the United States. So there we go. Here's a, a quick overview for you on the Gini coefficient.